Welcome to The People's View, a program dedicated to discussing local, state, and national issues and their effect on the American people. The People's View provides a platform for state representatives and national figures to present their viewpoint. Whether it's social, economic, or financial topics, you'll hear it on The People's View. Hello, and welcome to The People's View. My name is Carl Seidel. I'm a representative in Ward 1, and this show is sponsored by the Nashua Republican City Committee. Uh, please go to our website at uh, nashuagop.org uh, and see what kind of programs we have and uh, looking at uh, past, uh, past episodes of this uh, show. And today we have Representative Tim Twombly from Ward 7. And Tim, welcome aboard. You're going for your second term now that you got through the primary. I am. I and am. And you're on the uh, finance committee. Yes, I am. And you worked your tail off, as I understand, this we, last we, two we years. We did. Yes, we but did. But you did a good job. You got cut the budget. Uh, we cut it 11.5%. Yeah. So something in that job. range, about 800, between 850 and $900 million, good. depending on which set of numbers you want to look uh -huh. at but and, and how they're put together. But. So what do you think you're uh, going to be able to accomplish in the coming year? What's your objective? What uh, uh, bills do you think might go through or will be controversial? Well, I know that there's, there's one investigation going on right now <laughs> that has to do with the Liquor Commission. Uh -huh. And uh, one of the other state reps and I were, were thinking, of, before this ever came to light, we were thinking that we, if we did a little modern management of that agency, that uh, the state would be able to collect even more money than it does because that is one of our very profitable, uh, very profitable uh, revenue generators. Mm -hmm. And we figured with some more efficiencies that we could get more out of it. And then lo and behold, we've got, we've got a problem with $100,000 missing and I don't know. Some maybe maybe some contracts weren't signed properly. There's, There's I know that they're doing a lot of there. lot of investigating. Yeah. I'm I'm wondering just how far this goes. Whether well, I know there's also been some talk about maybe you only need one commission and not three. Well, that was an idea that Bill and I had. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, yeah. That you know, you have one manager. Every, is uh, did what, they have any reason they had three? <laughs> I could tell you the reason that I think, but that's probably inappropriate, oh, okay. so, so I, okay. <laughs> I won't mention that. <laughs> no, but it, it is a profitable one, so you have to be careful of how you uh, do any management or, or strict management of what's happening. Absolutely, and, and with all the cash that it generates, you've yeah. gotta, everybody's got to handle that properly, too. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, that's just one element of the budget. Uh, do you have any idea how this uh, budget process will go in 2013? Because we have to come up by the end of June with a new budget. Oh, yes. Well, I know that we passed in the state law that I've, I've heard that they're working currently on a maintenance budget. Now, the maintenance budget that I saw two years ago was, was an increase over what they had before. Well, we passed a law this last time that said they had to come back with a budget that was 10% less. So I'm, I'm, you're I'm waiting to see what waiting that is. to see what, what what comes out of that. I'm I'm excited about it. I'd like to. I'd, I'd, I really would like to know what's going on right now. But yeah. I'm hoping that they're following the law. Good. I hope so too. I know their excuse for having a maintenance budget that was higher than the previous one was. Well, there was still a line item in there. We just filled in the line items. We saw what we needed to maintain our level Absolutely. of Absolutely. And, and, that's and, a poor excuse. Uh, that's a poor excuse. And, and uh, I know that when we, uh, they, they came, some of these agencies came before us with unfunded positions uh, or vacant positions, vacant positions. So we took the funding away. But then we actually killed the requisition that 
created created that, that position or that you know the yeah. the slot. And now I'm thinking, okay, if they're going to use this excuse, maybe we've got to kill some account numbers also. I think that's right. You're going to have to wipe out line items. I mean, it is a line item budget that you have to go through. Yes, right? we we do. We go line by line. And uh, on, that, on each you one have of the them agencies. justify it, and then you either make adjustments or uh, eliminate it. So it's going to be an interesting uh, time. And uh, uh, tell us how the Finance Committee approaches this uh, budget problem. I mean, uh, how do you divide up your work? Oh, there's, there are three divisions. Uh, the division that I'm in works with, um, I've said 42 because I'm not, I, I, I counted them up and I don't remember whether it's 42 or 48. But we've got, we've got that many agencies that come before us, uh, Department of Labor, Liquor Commission, Department of Environmental Services, all those major kind of agencies. And then we've got another division that works with the education uh, system and another agency that works with Health and Human Services. They're the and biggest uh, agency. They're, they're the biggest agency. They have the most money in. in Forty-some uh, percent, isn't it? The I, I believe it's. I believe it's uh, in, in that range. Yeah, it's yeah. a very large percentage. And, yeah. and uh, obviously, they've they've got a lot of good that they do for people that are in need. Uh, but they're. There's also been some indication that there could be some fraud going on with, you know, by recipients within, not not the Health and Human Service Agency itself, but recipients of mm -hmm. of the money. And uh, we we have a new system that's coming in where with with an agency uh, that's providing software that will review. The, the recipient's uh, information to find out whether they're registered in this state, if their primary address is in this state. Any of the people that are on welfare and stuff like that. The people like that. that are on welfare, yes. Yeah. yes. So that's what they're going to check. Well, I know they have probably the largest number of contracts, individual contracts, that they give out to a lot of these nonprofit organizations, which handle things for them in, the, in various aspects of welfare. Uh, they're... I think is where we have to look uh, a little bit deeper because I don't know if there's any formal way of evaluating how well those uh, nonprofits perform their particular objectives of that contract. You know, is, is, uh, do they do it uh, meet all objectives? Do they do it uh, you know, under budget, over budget, or on time, or not on time, or what problems they have? So you have a, a history of these. Uh, not for profits. Yes. And do you need uh, non -pro uh, that many non profits? Can they combine it? You know, so you don't have so much overhead for each. Each one has to have some administrative overhead. Absolutely, they all have administrative yeah. overhead. And you know, the, what I see is that they specialize in a certain area that one works here in Nashua, but wouldn't work up in Concord. So why not have a statewide organization of that type, uh, or or two or three? You know, and then you can choose and have some competition among them. Northern, northern New Hampshire, central New Hampshire, and right, southern New Hampshire. Right. That that would certainly uh, uh, reduce some of the, you know, a lot of the redundant overhead. I think that's what, you know, we have to look at. But I imagine you're looking at every little detail in it. And you were uh, clerk of the uh, your division, I understand. That's a lot of paperwork, isn't it? It's a lot of paperwork. It's, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's fun. But it's a, it is a lot of work, uh, trying, to, trying to write down everything that everybody's saying. And, and, uh, but that detail is needed to go back to it. You go back absolutely. to that. Absolutely. We go, go back, back to, to the that. detail, and, and it's very important that we get the votes correct. Uh, yes. You know, the, the, the for and against uh, whatever, whatever motion has been made. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's important because, you know, we're, we're, we're creating law. And... You put in a lot of uh, full weeks, I, I imagine, last last couple of years. Yeah, yeah. I think from like the middle middle of uh, February to the end of March, we we worked uh, well five days a week, and some some nights we worked late at night. Mm -hmm. Well, may, I mean, I don't know if the people realize, but that uh, mainly uh, most of the committees only work uh, three days a week. And, right. Uh, oh, that's right. They may. The they finance may not. And, and ways and means are two of the busier committees. Yeah, and, and, and we we have to we have to do it that way because 
by law, we have to be passing that budget. Right. We have to complete the budget, have it voted on in, in, in the full House, and then it, get, then it goes over. That's by the beginning of May, right? Uh, well, we do it, actually, we do it by the end of March oh, because of it March, has to go over right. to the Senate. That's right, yeah. Okay. So, so we do it to get it that way. Yeah, yeah. It, it is difficult. And uh, what else are you going to be looking at uh, during this? I mean, do you have any other interests in uh, the uh, state operation that you sort of follow up on? In other well, in, a, in addition to work, looking over these different departments that, that we have, yes, uh, there, there's a couple. Uh, Department of Labor. Uh, Last year, that was made to be. A, it was there was a there was a law passed that things the fines that they that they assess could be kept in their in their funds. Now, we did give them a budget, and they do have to work to that budget, and so supposedly that money is supposed to come back to the general fund at the end of the biennium. Uh, I, I thought that it was inappropriate for them to even keep the money. I thought the money should go into the state treasury, end up in the general fund, because it just looks, it, to, me, to me and to others, it looks as if they can go out and fine businesses and, and reap the w revenue and increase their staff so they can go out and repeat that over and over. That's right. Yeah, that's what uh, a number of people were worried about, uh, that they would go out and fund things that you cut, you know, yes. by, by just finding people. And there were some complaints. Uh, I'm on the Rules and Regulations Commission, and we heard from some small uh, businesses that they felt that they were being, you know, picked on in a way uh, and not given a chance to even remedy some of the situations that they found themselves in violation of one rule or another. Uh, they're not the like, big companies that have lawyers that can take care no, of them. No, no, the large companies can right. protect themselves. Yeah, yeah. And because uh, one of the things I found a little bit odd is that the Department of Labor has, uh, well, now it's back to about eight different conditions that have to be met to be called an independent contractor. And, uh, you know, small companies use a lot of independent contractors because they don't have enough work for a steady employee. They bring them, bring certain skills in when they need them and uh, which makes a lot of sense if you're right. building a house you bring in the plumber if you build you know and or or the sheet rocker or whatever you but other agencies only use three conditions to determine what oh. so you had labor operating independently uh, but I think they're working hard to train people and what they have what they want to see for an independent contractor versus uh, an employee and that has a consequence in the fact that if you're an employee, that adds to your business enterprise tax. And yes. uh, that's uh, one of the other ways they had of bringing in money is by saying, well, we have more employees, so we're getting more tax money. But that's one way to kill entrepreneurs, too, from getting off the ground. Sure. People, people just can't form the businesses <coughs> if, if, if the taxes end up being much higher than the income that they're making. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what the enterprise tax is. It has nothing to do with profits. It's just, what's your that's payroll? Right. Yeah. How much money that's did you right. spend? Well, give us 5%. Yeah. So that's one of the whole things that we, uh, I mean, the whole uh, House and, and the Senate are looking at to encourage more new business development, to uh, encourage growth and stuff. You know, so you're not penalizing people, uh, you know, with uh, just heavy taxes or regulations. So... Yeah, our, 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 our goal is, is to increase the tax base by having more businesses right. as opposed to increasing the tax base by raising somebody's rate. Mm -hmm. You come from a big business. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and why you think that uh, that uh, helps you in your job? Oh, well, I, I was a financial analyst at BAE Systems. Mm -hmm. I worked there for 32 years and... and uh, we we did we did a lot of you know inventory control, uh, uh, costing out of products and budgets and budgets and overhead monitoring, uh, and and you know it, within the operations division at one time I, I and I'm I'm assuming it's the same 
uh, manufacturing was like two thirds of the uh, mm, business control. Yeah, yeah, had two thirds of the cost of yeah. the of of the business. So it was you know it was very yeah. very large a uh, lot of responsibility to. So you can apply and find out where the missing wine is. Huh? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping <laughs> yeah. so. Yeah, we, we, we've done audits over the years, that uh -huh, kind of stuff. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, I think that uh, we got a lot of people in last year, uh, the last election, uh, that had business experience. And I think that's when one of the things we need to approach uh, the whole statewide operation is give it a little bit more of a business-like approach where you're looking to see where you can save money and where you can do more yes. effective things to increase the overall uh, income and what we can do. It's not increasing the rates, it's increasing the base, as you said. Yes. Well, why don't you tell the audience where they can reach you if they had any questions, and anybody from Ward 7? Okay, I, my, I have an email address that is twombleyforstaterep at gmail.com, and that's F-O-R and not the number four. So it's Twombly for State Rep at gmail.com. And my home phone, uh, I can give that out and you can call me if you want, and that's 888-4466. Well, very good, and uh, we'll look forward to having you back during the year to talk about some of these problems that are coming up and how you're working on a solution. Well, so, thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us today. That's and great. And thank you for listening in. This is the uh, People's View. Uh, sponsored by the Nashua City Republican Committee, uh, nashuagop.org. Uh, you'll find out all the programs that we have, and you can be able to look at uh, past uh, episodes of this show. Thank you very much for tuning in.